and um, Jeff Frill, our administrative manager, is out. We're expecting back today. He's out until August 10th at this point. Um, so the contracts and leases um, will still be uh, handled by uh, Armando and myself. Uh, for those who have questions about that, so you can contact either Armando or me. Um, in terms of exhaustive efforts and frozen funds, we have only one neighborhood council in South LA, and that's Voices Neighborhood Council, um, because of the loss of quorum issue, and we are trying to work with them um, to get a selection process in place where we have enough candidates to bring them back up to quorum. Um, the, let's see, let's see. Oh, the other thing, we, we did do our kickoff meeting with city clerk and everyone counts today for online voting and um, we will be holding um, a town hall and we're looking at the last Saturday of July which I believe is the 29th at this point uh, to do a general neighborhood council system town hall we have a few things that we would like neighborhood councils to it's all right um, to weigh in on and um, some of the uh, final um, online voting decisions would be one of them um, grievances uh, the grievance policy would be another one and funding uh, policy and review for the last year would be another one so it's kind of a uh, let's kind of, uh, wrap up a few things that we need to wrap up in order to proceed for the next year um, with that I'm happy to take any questions Commissioner Atkinson. Uh, just, just curious on the exempt positions um, and the posting by the personnel department. Where, where, are those candidates from within the city or can they come from without the city? Uh, how, where do the candidates come from and, and um, those that are not in the city or working already in the city, how do they find out about so the um, the postings on the personnel website are under the exempt positions, which means they're not civil service, and you don't have to take a test in order to apply, which means that they are open to everybody. Um, uh, and uh, the the um, the ones for IT and and outreach, they were posted not only on the city site but also the um, to some schools as well um, um, in terms of the IT departments and um, the personnel department has their own set of where they post things it's kind of like so we went with like the comment just post so I have uh, one other question because I know that um, I, got, I got a couple of emails and, were, and I know that you got a couple of emails that people were interested and you said and you sent very nice emails out to say that you know they had to wait till the the positions were posted so do you those folks uh, that email you you answer them back now and say hey go to wherever they can right so I so for those who asked me um, about it uh, I will be following up the, the posting went up about the same time on a vacation actually so I today's my first day back so um, I'll be going through my emails and letting letting folks know about that um, and, and I have contacted some people already about it and, and I do I know you had some questions about um, budgeting and personnel um, Commissioner Atkinson. so um, I wanted to clarify again that there was some uh, misunderstanding in regards to um, funding for online voting and funding for personnel and uh, what where the misunderstanding misunderstanding happened was that the way our budget was structured for fiscal, this current fiscal year, um, it would have required any savings from the department in order to fund online voting. Um, so we anticipated that we likely would not be able to immediately bring on our exempt positions uh, the way we wanted to uh, and delay the higher day. Basically, to go through the process, but then delay delay the hire date until like the last week of June, which would only have delayed us maybe two weeks at the most, two to three weeks from our original timeline. But as it turns out, because of the personnel department's um, process themselves, 
uh, they also have a delay because they have uh, staffing issues as well and it turned out that that delay wasn't um, we didn't even have to put that delay in because it's taken them this long to actually do the posting and now to do the actual interviews it's going to go into July anyway so um, there was there was no diversion of any uh, savings from the department um, from personnel to um, to go to on the board. Uh, Commissioner Lippman and then Commissioner Atkinson. Uh, yes, on the online voting, do we have a count on how many library councils opted in and whether, I, I know that uh, there's some correspondence with Stephen Box saying that the, it's been signed by, or it's at the mayor, it's been signed by the mayor's office and the contract's going through, but have we gotten the number that we need? And then the second question is, has a decision been made and a number of neighborhood councils have asked me about uh, whether or not uh, vote by mail will still be available as an option for elections. So uh, the the contract was approved. So how how it's the how it typically goes um, once this commission approved the the contract. Um, if it didn't have to go before city council, which in this case it did not, um, it just goes to the mayor's office. And the mayor's office would then have to do the approval of the final contract. Uh, and they usually will do that only after the CAO uh, does a, a report on the contract and analyzes that there's sufficient funding and that you know the contracts are all within city um, policies and procedures. Uh, unfortunately, because the, by the time we approved the contract, it got into the budget season, um, CAO was not able to do the final review until about three weeks ago, and at that point, um, their review went to the mayor's office as favorable, and the mayor's office um, then uh, approved the contract. So we did sign off on the contract before I left um, for my on vacation. And um, so we scheduled a kickoff meeting for this today in order to get started um, on, on making sure that we can assist all the neighbor councils who are selecting online voting. As of now, we have um, 35 neighborhood councils who selected online voting. They actually voted for it. Um, we would have actually an, uh, another 10 that would have defaulted into it um, had we, uh, because they're self-affirmation. Um, we've decided that uh, rather than go with those defaults, that we would go with those neighborhood councils who actually selected it. Um, and so we're maintaining um, the 35 and we're doing actually the review right now with everyone counts to make sure that we can have all of the ballot styles done completed in time um, given that the fact that we're about a month and a half behind what I would have liked where I would have liked to have been <laughs> in terms of our timeline um, I anticipated it, it, it'll likely stay stay at 35 uh, but um, we're saying up to 35 at this point and um, and as for uh, regular um, vote by mail, it's unlikely that we will be offering that um, uh, because of the uh, option that neighbor councils had to do online voting. Okay, I hate the part for me. Zip position from now, I have my next question. And it could be my fault for not always reading everything because sometimes it's just too much paper being passed out. And I know you've explained what the exempt positions are, their titles. I would like to know what those five exempt positions, what those people are actually are going to do under the title. I want to know who's in the office, who goes to the who goes to the neighborhood council meetings, what are their exact jobs, and I'm wondering if you can present that in a written form at our next meeting because I want to know exactly, not just their titles, but I want to know what these five exempt positions are going to be doing from food.